What's up guys, hope you're doing well today. I've got a very special video for you today about the ESL tournament that just happened over the weekend. We got a one day notice. I wasn't really expecting to do much other than make videos and other things like that during the weekend, but we had to play. We had to give it a shot because we did make it to the top 128 last time with a pretty tough schedule. It was a pretty tough road to get in and I just barely cracked the, the bottom of the list. And I think uh, maybe they're going to make some improvements for this tournament right here. I won't talk about it too much. You guys can probably see a lot of stuff going on with it on uh, on Twitter and, and Twitch and stuff. So if you have comments and questions about the tournament itself, I'm more than happy to answer in the, in the comments today. But this video is kind of long because I've got all eight games in there. So I want to make sure that we can get through that quickly too. Because I am going to talk about the highlights from every single game. But there's so much on the line that we have to try. We have to put the time in to try to make this happen uh, and see how far we can push ourselves. So let's get right into these games. All right, so game one of the tournament right here, we faced a guy who right at the beginning asked me uh, how we set up a challenge in Diamond Dynasty. So I kind of thought that maybe he wasn't too used to it. You can get away with not really playing friendlies in Diamond Dynasty. I think I didn't play a friendly in Diamond Dynasty for like the first two years that I played. So it doesn't mean that he's complete noob at the game, but it did tell me that he'd never played in the tournament before. So that was going to be really interesting. This guy does swing at a couple tough pitches during this inning. A lot of a lot of swings and misses early, but he did hit that home run in the first inning with uh, Chris Bryant. So if you guys watch my pitching tips videos, that's actually one of those hitters that I talked about that kind of just swings at everything, but when it's in the zone and what they're looking for, they can really put good contact on it. So I could tell this guy was talented, if not experienced. So uh, then he does get the bloop hit there to start uh, another rally. We have to see if we could shut that down early. Also, apologies for the quality at the beginning of this video. I forgot to record off the capture at the beginning. I was like, hey, we might as well make this a, a YouTube video. So I did take the first game off of my PS4. So it's in 720p expanded. So it looks a little strange. We do get Ketel Marte swinging and missing there, but it's only one and one so far. And it's swinging and miss at the fastball down the middle. So he's definitely jamming the PCI. Very unlikely that he's using anything like directional. And then a swing and a miss in the dirt. That's going to be a little bit of a pattern that we see here the rest of the game as well. So we do give up that one home run, but we get to go and hit in the bottom of the first as well. There's a lot of people that told me that they didn't want to participate in ESL because it's so frustrating to deal with. And again, I, I'm not going to talk a whole lot about the tournament itself, but I did want to say that uh, one of my strengths when I play this game is that I'm pretty composed and I don't let myself get too frustrated by things like lineouts and stuff like that, the blue pits and whatnot. And I can usually stay at least composed enough to not feel bad about it. Sometimes it does affect my gameplay to where I just like kind of swing too much after that happens. But in terms of me getting frustrated too much to the point where I don't feel like doing other things outside of the video game, I think I've calmed myself down enough to not do that anymore. So I figured someone like me who has pretty good composure, if there are frustrations that, that happen with the ESL tournament, I figured I could deal with them and just move on from them even if they happen. But uh, had a pretty good weekend, not going to lie. I left a lot of gameplay here at the very beginning, even though uh, as we go through the video, it's going to be a lot more just highlights. Right now, we're kind of seeing every pitch that we started with, just so I can talk a little bit about what's going on here and kind of the things I was looking to do during the weekend. And then we'll just kind of go into the highlights, like I said, as the game goes on. A little bit of a, a fly out, a line out here to deep center field. A pretty good swing on that one, but... I felt like uh, the first couple batters, I wasn't really on anything. I did have a lot of nerves in this tournament. Um, I don't play with a lot of nerves in ranked seasons at all. I don't really feel anything when that happens. And I gave up a first pitch home run to Cody Bellinger right here. So that one's going to be way out. Again, this guy can hit a little bit. It's a 2-0 game. And I'm looking for this ball low and away here with Eddie Matthews from Kenley. Kenley's got that cutter-sinker combination. Uh, I like to start off looking low and away because a lot of people try to get you to roll over. A lot of guys that throw the cutter sinker, if you if you look for that pitch inside, a lot of times the cutter's just going to beat you anyway. So I try to look away for that pitch. Then you can you can catch the cutter coming over the middle of the plate, or you can get that sinker that's going around the edge. Same thing when you have right-handed batters. Here I'm looking again with uh, Jonathan Scope. He gets me with the speed that time. But if I'm looking away for that pitch, I can get I can get the uh, cutter that goes away to the edge, and I can also get the sinker that comes back over the middle. So you can kind of cover the two pitches and actually hit them pretty decent. Right here, keep in mind this uh, PCI right here. Um, it's kind of small for Jonathan Scope. You can square up that ball, but uh, keep that PCI in mind for later in the video. Josh Fegley grounds up the middle here with a runner on second. It would have gotten us to within one run there. 
But we go with uh, George Brett to start the bottom of the third here. I've got two guys on the bench that are left-handed. I've got Fred McGriff and I've got George Brett. This is the gold George Brett. And this is kind of why I have him in there. I don't generally like pop up pitches and you'll see this PCI placement for a second. Uh, I don't try to like blue pits or anything like that, but I did want a line drive to get on base. You see, I'm actually out in front of the plate there with the, with the bat making contact and I got late feedback. I don't think that should happen. It could have easily been a line drive up the middle, uh, but either way we get on base. So that's a nice way to start it out. Trout's up next, the top of the lineup here. So again, I'm looking to loan away against uh, Kenley here. And he gets me on the speed once again. If those two pitches where he threw sliders would have been cutters, it could have been a different story. We get that change up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show exactly what happens because it is the bottom of the third. We're down by two. And I told you I went eight. No. So how does this happen? Let's take a look. We get a change up low and uh, we push it to the right side, hit it pretty hard. Um, thankfully, with the 94 speed, he actually looked to me like he was out. But thankfully, we get him on base and that's going to play huge in just a second here. We did square it up below the zone. Probably could have easily been a... Uh, double play so i'm thankful for that we get a couple check swings here too uh, i am the check swing king it does come into play quite a bit uh hard hit ball up and in here for cody bellinger and even though he's got i think someone with decent arm in center field i'm not totally sure might be bellinger i do take third base there it wasn't really necessary but i did it anyway i'm not really sure why i did that run does not matter, and it doesn't really help with any force outs other than the one at third base, which generally never happens anyway. So I'm not sure why I did that. We got a good squared up. We got Carlos Correa. And he actually comes through in this very first opportunity for Carlos Correa. He gets that change up, I believe, maybe something low and in uh, for a base hit. Past the shortstop there. Yeah, change up low and in on the corner. Good squared up. And we are now within one run here two-seamer to start i'm taking that pitch all the way if it's not in my zone right there i'm not swinging at it this ball is in my zone it's a slider right down the middle i take a swing at it we get the double we didn't really think we could make it there from third base so we got the runner at third the go-ahead run there uh, with the first base open eddie matthews up here batting fifth and he brings in luzardo another check swing like i said Another check swing. With first base open, he decided not to go for a righty-righty matchup and just face the next guy, who I think my number six hitter would have been like Jonathan Scope. There it is right there. He goes 3-0 to Eddie Matthews. Hits a pitch on the corner, not swinging at that with 3-0 count. And he goes up and in. And I'm, I was kind of looking for that pitch too. I had the PCI set up there, uh, but it was a little bit more inside than I would have liked. And I pop it up. But if you saw right there, he took a, a fraction of a step backwards. And that caused him to get a really, really bad catch animation. It doesn't matter whose arm you have out there, even if it's Willie Mays, you're unlikely to make that catch. So we do walk off the first game with a sacrifice fly. Now the, I think the highlights are going to come in a little bit more fast and furious that we have the uh, stage set a little bit. That Carlos Correa swing up the middle was the only hit that we had so far. He brings in Chapman. We hit a line drive here to left field. It gets past the, the left fielder Gallo. I do take third base. I... Wasn't really sure if I should go. I don't know if it was like cheese if I go on a play like that because there's no reason for Gallo not to pick up that baseball. And on top of that, I I also wasn't sure if there was some lag. So I just wanted to um, make sure that it actually did get passed and I didn't get thrown out accidentally. We got runners on the corners with, with uh, two outs here. So we do have to get a base hit in order to come through. Fred McGriff, he's my guy that I put in. Like I said, George Brett's the guy I put in to get on base. Uh, and Fred McGriff's the guy that I put in to drive in runs. You're going to notice I do swing in a lot of those high fastballs out of that zone throughout this entire video. And Fred McGriff gets that hanging slider right there, knocked down at first base. Close play at first. We could have tied it up there. Uh, you saw last game where on a play similar to that, not necessarily the play itself, but the timing of the throw to first, uh, Trout was actually safe and that one was an out. We don't come through there. We are down 1-0. 2-0 count, though, to Mike Trout. Top of the lineup coming up again, which is really nice. And I swing at kind of a bad pitch here. It was a sinker, a fork ball, and uh, we are 2-2. Two and two. That time I lay off the high fastball. He's seen that I've swung at it enough times that he keeps going back there, which is a fair play. And again, check swing. I'm telling you, there's going to be probably a check swing that wins, wins me every single game. Not going to lie. Slider away. We get on first base with good speed. I'm not a person that steals too much. So keep that in mind. If I got 94 speed with what do we have here? 97 stealing, 
I'm probably staying at first base. Not that I think that stealing is cheese or anything, but I just am not good at it. We get tied up completely in this at bat. You don't see me do that too much where I'll take pitches uh, over the middle of the plate and, and strike out. Uh, so that's kind of different for me. I wasn't really expecting to see that. But we do get tied up and Correa is coming in to face Billy Wagner. Really good matchup here. Really great splits for Correa. He gets another uh, double down the line. I think the same thing happened last game. And uh, he gets to second base barely. I thought he was going to be out here. A little bit of a slow tag. Definitely thought he was going to be out. I actually lost a 10-0 BR run like that the other day. He's going to walk Harmon Killebrew to get to Eddie Matthews again. So last game, Eddie Matthews with a walk-off sack fly. He's got another opportunity to actually win the game here. Uh, but at the very least, he's got to tie it up. So let's see what we ended up doing here. Another check swing. Another check swing. Would have been 0-2. 0-2 is very different from 1-1. And we swing at that high fastball, like I said. We swung at a few of those this game. And I'm uh, just very, very nervous. Like I said, I'm, I'm a person that's pretty composed outwardly, but I do get a lot of nerves. So absolutely, I was sweating. Um, you, you talk about sweat fests. I was absolutely sweating through my shirts during these games. I did actually go and put on some deodorant in between a couple of these games. That's not a joke whatsoever. Eddie Matthews, though, he does get the sacrifice fly. Uh, he, he ties up the game. We don't get on base with um, Jonathan Scope. And right here, we got Josh Fegley, Fegley leading off the bottom of the fourth. This guy's a great card, a gold card. Not great splits against the lefties, but sometimes he's got the pop to put up big swings. He's circling the ball. He's jumping, and he's robbing the freaking walk-off home run. So he, he puts up a good swing. I think the wind was going in that direction, so it only helped the swing, I believe. I can't remember exactly. That was kind of unlucky right there. Uh, if you guys were, if you guys follow Scuffy on on Twitter, he was talking about that Fegley card earlier that day too. So I know I'm not the only one that likes that card. Uh, he's got good numbers. He's got good vision, which is really nice. Um, otherwise, I'd be using someone like Gary Sanchez, but his PCI feels a little too small. And there are certain guys with not great per nines with these reduced staminas in these tournaments. And Trout goes ER to end the game. Finally, we don't get punished for that. We do get the uh, lost connection. I made sure to take a clip of this as well. Uh, there you go, right there, the screenshot of the guy quitting. So I wanted to make sure that I, like there was no funny business with the reporting of scores. This ball died. There is wind blowing in in this game, I believe. Otherwise, that could have been a gapper. <clears throat> Look at this perfect swing. Perfect swing. That That's a very early squared up just in front of the plate. That's a 100% perfect swing. So I don't care what, what people say when, say when people say early squared up. That's a good good right there on the ground, by the way. When people say early, okay home runs, sometimes you square out the baseball. Sometimes it's a perfect swing. Begley does line out here as well. He's got, this guy threw me a lot of high fastballs, and I'll show you the... I believe I'm going to show you the outs later in this game in the in the hit feedback. And this is the very next batter right here. Begley followed by Yaz, line out to center. I like this card, um, but I did switch him out later in, in the tournament, so I'll show you that, guys, in a bit. And another pretty good swing here. Let's take a look at this feedback. Look at that. Exactly the same as the killer bird. That's a perfect swing. It says very early, but I was barely just in front of the plate. Another deep flight is left centered here. Again, this guy's been throwing me high fastballs. I've been on every single one of them. Keep that in mind for a little bit. Uh, that one uh, didn't really get the PCI on, so should not have been a home run. I'm definitely okay with that one. There, finally, we get the fastball down the middle with Bellinger to get into the gap. Safe at second base. We are set up for a go-ahead run right here. It's squared up down the middle. We got Carlos Correa. And what do you know? Another line out. And take a look at this feedback as well. So I don't I don't care too much about lineouts in general, like they happen. But when you get feedbacks like the ones I've been getting in this game, look at that. I'm out in front of the ball and it goes to left to right center. Makes no sense. Anyway. We finally get another high fastball. We tomahawk it. Harmon Killerbrew this time. We deposit it over the 310 fence. You got to hit line drives. You got to hit it to the shortest part of the ballpark. Killerbrew ends it right there. And I do get a message from this guy saying that I made just one bad pitch. It wasn't salty or anything. It wasn't salty. So I'm not going to you know, say anything about the dude himself. But take a look at this, right? One, two, three, four, five. At least five uh, red 15s up there. And uh, we did line out on quite a few high pitches. He told me he was trying to get me to pop up. I didn't respond to his message. I said GG after he said GG. But I didn't respond to his message because I was going to get a little salty too about the fact that I lined out that many times. 
which I don't I don't complain about too much, to be honest. That was the end of day one for ESL. And uh, the way they do tiebreakers is strength of schedule. So my strength of schedule that first day was not good enough. Uh, if you do get top eight for any qualifier, you're automatically put into the tournament. So I was a little bit bummed that uh, my, my schedule just wasn't great because I played some tough games, went 4-0, and still have to play more qualifiers, which can be very frustrating because it takes about four hours plus out of your uh, weekends. So I said, hey, let's bring it back Sunday. We did well the first day. Let's see what we can do day two. So we're going to jump right here into game one of day two. We got we got runners on the corners here with just one out. And uh, Carlos Correa pops out. But thankfully, Harmon Killebrew is right behind him to uh, pick up the slack. And then the wind kicks in. We got Joey Gallo. 0-2 count. He dots me on the outside corner. Couldn't believe it. And he throws me a changeup. That's why I don't use the changeup for Rich Gossage. I throw fastball slur for the most part. Sometimes a sinker, but... The changeup, I feel like, either hangs or just gets hit hard for no reason. Three-run homer for Joey Gallo. All right, then right after Gallo, we have another uh, two-strike count here for Jonathan Scope. Goes opposite field. We got a similar pitch like that earlier. Remember, we talked about that PCI. It's going to come up again, but uh, this time we got the sinker. We did not jam it to the edge, which was really good. So we do get the home run on that. Next inning to start off. He actually got a home run from Trey Turner to start the game. So I thought this was going to be pretty sweaty. I think it was me. I thought it was going to be a high scoring game. And uh, the wind was blowing out and ship it. So you never know. Uh, we do get another home run. Very next pitch, we go to right center with Willie Mays. And then that's followed by Cody Bellinger. And on the very next pitch for him, he goes yak. So. Three straight pitches, we get a homer, double, home run, and then we get this. Opponent has quit. We skip right on through. He sent me a message, said GG, didn't expect a sweaty first game. And I was like, well, you got to bring it when you got the money on the, on, the, on the line. He did send me a message afterwards as well, saying GG for uh, my performance later in the, in the day. So he was not salty at all. And another uh, opportunity here for Carlos Correa. This is game two. And get, look who we are matched up against here. Pop out again for Carlos Correa. We got matched up with Like a Bus, who is a top player. He went very deep in the last ESL tournament, so I was not looking forward to this one. Uh, we'd get the double play from Killebrew there. I hit my spot pretty much right here. It's pretty much where I wanted it. Um, I wanted it above the corner, because I felt like if I threw the cutter on the corner at the very bottom, he could have hit it. I thought he would pop that up, but he was all over that pitch. He does uh, tie up that game there. And then here, in the top of the third, he lines out with Babe Ruth. Middle, middle slider you're going to see right here. So I get very, very lucky. He was all over the baseball. Um, he's only down by one now. And he slaps to left. I threw a sinker away to a slap hitter, Edmund, which is very bad. But I have Willie Mays playing in left field. Not Mike Trout. I got Mike Trout in center. Willie Mays is playing left. Big arm in the corner, throws him out at third, which ends up being huge because I would have had to get one more out. And against Bus, he could make you snowball at any point. So I get very lucky right there. Wind's blowing out to left field here, by the way. I think 10 miles an hour. It's a 3-2 count. I'm, or it's a 2-1 count. I'm down 3-2. A nice little at-bat here for Willie Mays. And we're going to see what we can do against Billy Wagner. I really, really like this matchup, but I was not looking for a fastball inside. I was looking for one away. Didn't really think he would challenge me there. And then we do go yard. Willie Mays ties it up. I was, oh my God, the breath of relief that I had at this moment. That was a huge home run. I couldn't go to two outs there with uh, without the uh, tie game right there. Killebrew does get to third base. We got Joey Gallo. I'm going to let you sh see this at bat because it's Joey Gallo with the game on the line. You want him up whenever you can. We're facing Sergio Romo. Throws a high fastball. Doesn't get me to chase again. He knew I was t chasing that pitch because he threw me over and over that high fastball at least once per at-bat. He knew I was trying to swing at that pitch. Now I've got a decision to make. I'm only in the seventh spot in the lineup with Jonathan Scope. I uh, I wasn't sure if I wanted to go to a lefty here. I was like, no, I'm going with Scope. I think he's glitchy. I like him. But then I remembered that PCI feedback earlier where the vision was just a little too low for Scope. It is a 63, but he doesn't have the, the high contact to make his PCI big enough. The PCI on McGriff is just a little bit bigger. So I went with him. I, I took a step back. I said, no, I'm going to go with McGriff. Base is loaded three, three in the bottom of the third, two outs. And I'm looking low and away. Remember, same thing for, for Kenley. I was looking away for that low and away cutter or 
sinker and we walk off with Fred McGriff. The ball goes straight to my PCI right there. I was just looking for that one pitch. Didn't try to do too much with it. And we do end up walking off that game against an excellent player right there. Make sure you guys follow him on Twitch if you have not. That swing right there from Gallo. I thought Mike Trout was going to catch it. There is wind going that way as well. Yeah, you see the wind is playing a big factor in a lot of these games. Fly out to right. I missed that pitch right there. Slider over the middle of the plate and uh, just barely got underneath it and uh, popped out. Carlos Correa with a high and away fastball absolutely lasers it to tie up the game. And then he makes a really good pitch on Fegley with a couple runners on. And uh, I needed some more runs here. So we go with uh, Steve Pierce off the bench. My righty to produce runs. I also have Jonathan VR and Buster Posey as a backup catcher. So uh, I did go with the run producer, Steve Pierce, against the lefty. And he's keeping in Kershaw, which is really interesting. If you guys have watched my streams, you know I absolutely destroy Kershaw. And if you're going to leave him in in a three-inning game with low stamina, this is what's going to happen. I'm not going to show you the PCI feedback because it was horrible. I did not deserve a home run here, but Kershaw was tired. That's what happens. I do take a three-run lead at that time. A Willie Mays here goes deep to center field. I think that was another two-strike count. Got that low and away pitch I was looking for against Britain. And we get an insurance run right there. Correa here. Going to swing in a bad pitch inside. Followed by, I believe this is going to be a low and away slider, which I hit for a double play. So Correa has come up a few times with runners in scoring position. Or like right here with nobody out and a runner on first. And I've swung at some bad pitches with him. I'm closing with Nate Jones, which... Uh, is a questionable decision, I should say, because there are guys like Troy Percival, uh, Sergio Romo, and Lee Smith that are available li like 95 and below. As you see this pitch right here, don't look at the feedback, it's gross. That slider was low and in off the plate, he hit it like 88 miles an hour, but it is what it is. We get the pop out there, we get the swing and the miss here from Mancini. Runner on second with the righty versus lefty matchup. This was an absolutely huge at bat, which we needed to do exactly this. Strike out Mancini, that's huge because we got two outs. Now if we get a base hit, it's only a tie game. Uh, Escobar, unfortunately, I do hang the sinker a little bit. Bellinger gets a good, pretty good throw off here with a guy that just has average speed. Uh, felt like that was a little bit slow of a tag, but it is a 5-5 game. We're going to go away from Britain here. We're going to go to Matt Bush. Got a very, very good stuff. Uh, if you look at the card here, he's a gold, but to me, he looks a lot better than a gold. So I kind of like having him on this team. I also have AJ Ramos and Brett Cecil in the bullpen. I don't really question my decision to use Nate Jones. I, I feel like he's very effective against most people, but he has started hanging a few pitches. So I'm going to keep an eye on him. I do like the 92 Nen who could come in to replace him. So those are kind of my options. I'm not really good with the Romo, the, the Percival, or the Lee Smith. And he does swing at the low curveball. Thankfully, he doesn't hit it up the middle. He goes to the right side, does not get very good contact. And then first batter, top of the uh, fourth inning here. I was very thankful, by the way, because we had no outs by the time he scored uh, the two runs. Could have easily given up a couple more, but we do get through it. Fegley here with a nice line drive to left, which is, does not hang up for an out. It is a base hit. And then we got our guy McGriff again, and against the same pitcher, Sergio Romo. I was looking a little differently here. I'm not sure why exactly. Probably because it was a double play situation. I do get that same exact pitch. I think this might have been low and away, maybe a changeup or something, but same exact location where he walked off against Bus. And I guess that's the spot for Fred McGriff. If you guys have Fred McGriff, look for that low and away pitch. And then we come up with Trout. He throws me a two seam fastball. I was looking dead red for the fastball, uh, but he throws me the two seam, which just gets in me, gets in on me a little bit. And we line out for a sacrifice fly. Here I'm looking for where he got his hits because I felt like I, I was throwing pitches around the zone and he was getting hits around the zone. And that's exactly what happened. So he had most of his hits at the bottom of the zone, but a, a few at the top as well. So I wasn't sure exactly where to throw him. I could go a little bit more in detail and look at which pitches he's hitting better. But I know he hit a slider for a home run. I know he hit a fastball as well. And we get the cutter there up in the zone to Jose Reyes. And finally with uh, two outs, he does ground out to the right side. With Alex Bregman's so unbelievable game right there, we had to had to really, really come back and, and be strong and, and not give up after we lost all the momentum, giving up the lead in the bottom of the third. Because most of my games have been home games, 
and I walked off a few times already. If I lost composure there, I was going to be in big trouble. But now we're here in game four. I actually uh, forgot to record again, so I strung out there with uh, Steve Pierce, and now we're just going to the top of the third, seeing if we can close this out, and we're just going to let this one play out a little bit. As you know, I did go... 8-0, so you already know the results of this game. Uh, we're going to see how well this guy was able to fight. And shout out to this guy that I played right here as well because uh, we had, not I wouldn't say a dispute, but he, he told me that he was the home team when in fact that wasn't the case. But I told him in, in my message, I told him, I'm not going to argue because I think ESL has done a poor job of telling us who's going to be the home team. They said that, uh, number one, they said that home seeds are determined, or I should say the home team is determined by seeding. The higher no they didn't even see the higher seed they just said it's determined by seeding and uh that's it they didn't say the determination makes them the home or away team uh they didn't say which side of the bracket is the home team so it just says dude food versus scooter nuts and uh, it doesn't say which side of those two is supposed to be the home team uh, we did get an email someone contacted them uh, before the first tournament with an email saying that the team on the left is the home team but i don't have a copy of that so I told him that I don't I don't have any way to like prove to you that this is the case, but uh, I am supposed to be the home team. He was very cool about it, and uh, he he did say go ahead and, and send me the challenge. So I appreciate that from him. I wasn't trying to cheese him or anything like that, but he was cool. So I appreciate that. Shout out to him. I he I believe he is a Twitch streamer as well. So I I couldn't find his link, but it does say Twitch.tv on his name. So if he ever goes live, I will definitely hit him up. And that was a really bad at bat for me right there because we had two outs. D Gordon was up. He's a good hitter, but you got Willie Mays hitting behind him. You don't want to let D Gordon get on base ahead of Willie Mays representing the tying run. And then Willie Mays is the, the go ahead run. So we had to battle for this at bat too. We hit a couple good spots right there. We got the slider where we wanted it. We got the low and in sinker where we wanted it off the plate. And uh, this one's a little bit more off the plate, but it's a passed ball for Fegley. You could call it a wild pitch, but I felt like he could have Knocked that down a little bit, even caught it maybe. And uh, that does get the tying run into second base. But now we got a 2-2 count to Willie Mays. Haven't really been trying to hit the ball in the zone. Been trying to go very, very close to the zone, but not throw it directly in there. Now, I wasn't going with a sinker. Was not going to go to a sinker with Willie Mays at the plate. He's a little bit late on it. To the right side, Jonathan Scope with another nice play. That's kind of identical to what happened to end the previous game. And it was some sweaty games, man. That, that, that was a lot of fun. It was very sweaty. I had a good time. And uh, I will show you where we finished in this tournament because we did go 8-0. and But like I told you earlier, there's a little caveat where if you finish top 8, you make it straight into the finals. So let's take a look. So I was refreshing this page like crazy. It does say strength of schedule right here is uh, the way that you get your tiebreaker. <clears throat> but as you can see, there are a bunch of people tied for number 2 with 4-0 records and a tiebreaker of 10, all the way down to here. So we have almost like 20 people uh, tied for number two. And they did put an, another section in for a tiebreaker about scoring. So I wonder if they went back and actually did that behind the scenes. They didn't really express it here on this page. Maybe they went back and showed us that there are some behind the scenes things going on. But either way, uh, we did get that 10 tiebreaker. We did play some very good players today. And there was one guy with 11, so he got the number one spot. But we are right here, number six on this list. Is this number six? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm I'm saying this live, right? I'm number seven right here. Yesterday when I looked at this, I was number six, which means there is some stuff going on behind the scenes. There are still probably some people uh, like getting scores either reported or like disputed or something like that. Because last night I was number six. Right now I'm number seven which means I am not guaranteed to get in. This is what I told people yesterday. Uh, people gave me some congratulations, which I appreciate. And I told them, like, you never know what what's going to happen with these. Until I get an actual invite to tell me I'm in that final tournament or uh, I'm actually playing a game in the tournament, I'm not going to say anything about actually being in. But right here, it looks pretty good. We did blow that guy out in the first game, so maybe they gave me a little bit of a boost for the tiebreaker. But a lot of sweaty games, a lot of thin margins in these games. So it's very possible that we could drop a little bit more. But like I was saying earlier, I do try to stay a little bit composed. Usually when I stream or if I'm playing games, if I'm playing ranked seasons or something like that, I've usually got like somebody stream in the background. I've got usually not music. Music distracts me way too much because of the beat kind of throws off my timing. Uh, but 
you know, there's, there's always stuff going on in the background. I'm like sending a message, always very distracted. This time I did not let anything distract me. I had headphones on with basically white noise. I had, I had the game volume in and I was not going to let anything distract me. I went full focus for those 15, 20, 30 minutes of those three inning games. And I was not going to let anything get in my way. So last time when I played the ESL tournament, I, I knew that there were games that I could have won if I had just done one, one thing a little bit better. If I had focused for a couple more pitches and, and I felt like in these games, I didn't take any at bats off. I did have some bad swings. I did swing early in the count, but everything felt intentional to me. Whereas when I'm streaming or something like that, uh, sometimes you're just kind of, you know, on autopilot and just swinging and swinging and swinging. You look up and you're in the fifth inning with no runs. This time I was, I was laser focused for every at bat. So that is very important guys. If you are trying to either improve just in your ranked seasons games, uh, make sure you are focused for those games. It does really help, especially in hall of fame. You got to have like some pitcher patterns down and things like that. You saw me, I was reviewing my own swings. I knew when I was swinging at a certain pitch too much, and that actually helped me get that one extra run across, which actually ended up being the difference in the game in so many of those games. So even though this one was a little bit more of like patting myself on the back for, for having some fun games and hopefully getting into the finals of this qualifier, which is a $4,000 prize if you do win first place, um, I, I did try to incorporate as much as I could into this game about like the tips and the, the process, like the, the thinking process that I had throughout every single uh, stage of the game. Cause that's what, that's, that's how I started the channel. That's how I would love to continue the channel. Even when I do different stuff on here, I would love to, to continue to just give some tips and feedback. And as you can see, like, this is an improvement of myself from the last time you saw how much that I put, like how much thinking I put into the difference between the last ESL tournament and this one. So I'm always trying to improve myself. Whenever I feel like I make that kind of a jump, I want to make sure that I incorporate it for you guys to include for yourself as well. So that's just what I'm trying to, trying to get out there. So I, I kind of like the format of what happened here. It's going to be a long video probably again, uh, if, if this is the case, but I would like to continue to do videos for the ESL tournament and other big things like this, because uh, I, I noticed that I do, like I said, I play way better if I'm laser focused. So I will try to do videos if I, if I do pretty well in a tournament, uh, rather than streaming them, because I think it'll be better product for you. And again, thank you for watching. If you are participating in the ESL tournament in any of the qualifiers, best of luck to you. Hope you guys do very well. And I'm, I'm sure I'm going to match up with some of you guys later on. I know Bus wants that revenge game. So I am hoping he's on the very opposite side of the bracket. Somebody knocks him out and I don't have to deal with him because he's going to be coming back with some vengeance. Uh, GG's to everyone that I played. If you if you guys are watching this video and played me in this video, good games. Uh, the people, like I said, if, if someone messaged me after a game, they were not salty. They were, you know, they were given the GG's. So uh, GG's to those guys. Shout out to Scooter Nuts for <laughs> giving me the home game in that last one. I'm going to link a couple of videos here uh, at the end of the video. Uh, they're important for the beta especially which is coming out tomorrow as of this release of this video so be sure to watch that one if you haven't already and some other new stuff coming to the channel so i'll catch you guys later and have a good one